Hey friends, this is Callie. Thanks so much for joining me today. I am going to be sharing how I created these two geometric backgrounds using some dies from Simon Says Stamp. These dies were created by Laura Bassin, who is the queen of geometric designs in my opinion. And I'm going to be using two specific dies, just this four square one and this diamond tile here that cuts out four different triangles. My first design is going to be a fractal look, so I'm going to be using that diamond tile to create an ombre color uh, range going from pinks to purples. I want this fractal pattern to be very organic so that very first piece was just laid down without any sort of measurement. And now I'm just laying down the pieces and just making sure that no two colors touch side by side. So I am mixing and matching all these different triangular pieces and going from the lighter shades of pink and fading into the darker purple. And the only thing I want to point out here is that I think it's important to keep that diamond shape and I didn't think of that before I started laying down these pieces. So I did pull some up to rearrange. In hindsight, I really should have started that first piece off the page towards the left hand corner. So that way I didn't have to go back and fill in all that space at the top and to the left of that corner. So I'm just going to use all the extra pieces here to fill in some of the white space. I will trim this panel down, cutting off all of the excess, and also to mat my card base later on so that there's a nice crisp white border. Okay, so at this point I'm fairly certain that I can cut this down to a 3 and 3 quarters by 5 inch panel so that again I can have that nice matting for my card base. So I am trimming off all of that excess and then making sure that my panel is the right size. And now we have that fractal pattern completed. We're just gonna set that aside and work on our second card using the tiny squares that I die cut for my second panel. So I'm just gonna start at the top here and this one is gonna be a little bit more measured. I'm just gonna take all of those little squares and I'm just gonna lay them going across the panel evenly, starting with the darker color at the top. So I am using those corners on that first square as a guide and I'm just lining it up from corner to corner with the top of that A2 size card panel. I'll go across the page and then I'll start with my second color and fill in what's there and then continue to work my way down until I get into the light mints and greens. For these little squares, I did two passes per color, so I ended up having lots of little squares left over. I had enough squares to create a second panel that was more narrow that I don't share in the video, but I did end up getting two cards using all of these little pieces. Again, I am going to trim down my panel so that I have a three and three quarters by five inch card panel so that it will mat a nice A2 size card base when I'm done. The backgrounds are pretty busy, so we just want a simple die cut over top. I am using the crocus flowers dies here, and there are two crocus flowers in the set, which is perfect. So I've die cut them all three times, and I've got three different layers to stack together. I'm just going to remove the negative parts so that I can have a nice outline of these crocus flowers. I love layering outline dies like this because it just really gives your card a lot of dimension. I'm using some Gina K tape runner here and it's a dot tape runner. So the dots will only adhere to paper when you use it. So it's not leaving a film of residue behind like you would with a solid tape runner. So as I glide this tape runner over this die cut with the very fine pieces of cardstock as the outline, only the dot adhesive will adhere to that cardstock. So you don't get a bunch of adhesive hanging off the sides or in between each of the petal, which can be quite frustrating. And of course, liquid adhesive is always an awesome option. Just make sure that you're really light handed so you don't have any glue oozing out anywhere when you go to adhere it together. So once those are put together, I am going to add more dot adhesive runner to the back of these crocus flowers and adhere them right over the top of my background panels. I have prepared two card bases or note cards here and I'm going to adhere my background panels to those card bases using some foam adhesive to give it a little bit more dimension. Once those are in place, the last thing we need to do is just to adhere some sentiments. I love the pre-printed sentiment strips from Simon Says Stamp. There are so many in different themes and I love that I don't have to pull out my embossing powder and heat tool. 
So I'm using this one called Happy and I am just gonna select two different sentiment strips and cut them down. These are laser printed over white cardstock, so I just wanna mention that I did go around the border of the sentiment strips with a black marker to hide that white core from the cardstock. All right, so once my sentiment strips are prepared, I'm just gonna layer them right over those crocus flowers towards the bottom of the card. And because there are three layers to the crocus, I am adding some foam adhesive to the right and left sides of my sentiment strips and making sure I line it up perfectly using my clear tea ruler. And that completes my two geometric cards. I really hope you enjoyed these projects. I have to admit that these dies were a little bit intimidating for me. I didn't think I could create anything fun, but they were super easy to use and I hope it inspires you to pull out yours or create some geometric designs in other ways. Thanks for stopping by and have a great day everyone. Bye.